Kenya's arid and semi-arid lands, where pastoralism is a primary livelihood, are among the least developed in Kenya, with limited access to basic services and poor infrastructure. Increased frequency of recurring drought, coupled with population growth, has resulted in increased degradation of the critical and fragile natural resource base, which the population relies so heavily upon. 20, 30 years ago, we in this region, we experienced drought after every five years, uh, eight years, or even 10 years. But the frequency has really increased. Now we are experiencing drought after every two years. Sporadic, resource-based, and politically motivated conflict is endemic across the region, further exacerbating vulnerability to shocks. Poor service delivery and weak market systems limit asset development and maximum utilization of assets, especially livestock. Increased drought frequency and the range of factors contributing to vulnerability in Marsabit County have in the recent years caused and deepened poverty and vulnerability among the populations. Whenever drought hits, pastoralists lose thousands of prestigious and sole livelihoods, livestock and at times human lives. Children, elderly and mothers are the most affected whenever drought sets in. Part of 2016 and the whole of 2017, there has been, you know, very serious drought in this, in this, re in this region. So as a result, uh, the pastoralists lost uh, over 70% of their, of their small stock and also about 40% of their, of their camel. The problem in the education sector in arid and semi-arid lands is not only the poor attendance and graduation rates of nomadic children in school, but the damaging trade-off that nomadic parents and children have to make between acquiring formal education through the school system and the fundamental informal learning about their own cultural, social and economic world available to them as members of the complex social network of nomadic life. Such informal learning is crucial to a child's development. Current education practices for nomads tend to result in an unfavorable choice between these two types of learning because of the forced separation of children in school from their family, wider social environment and cultural background. Some crucial challenges in the provision of education to pastoralists follow from resistance to this forced separation more than from a refusal of formal education itself. Pasida's strategy addresses that fundamental challenge. Its vision is to develop a system which extends good quality formal education to all children living within nomadic livelihood systems or directly involved in pastoral production without undermining the children's economic and social position in those livelihood systems. In meeting this goal, PASIDA have carefully and deliberately pointed education as one of its key thematic program focus to better the future of the next generation through education, infrastructure, development and alternative education to pastoralist children and adults. There's been a narrative that you know, pastoralists don't want to take their children to school. But that narrative has been changing over time because pastoralists are also changing, the environment is changing. The Kenyan policy is changing, so basically people also appreciating. Boarding schools are a good option for a greater majority of nomadic children. Many active pastoralists who use school services for some of their children prefer boarding schools to day schools. The main reason is that boarding schools allow the herding household more independence from settlement life. On the other hand, unlike day schools, boarding schools still require the separation of children in education from the rest of the family and thus cannot serve children who work in the household. Boarding schools are effective in socializing nomadic children away from their own communities and this gives them opportunities to interact and learn more on wider global issues. When my child goes to school, he gets to eat three meals, unlike here at home where he gets only one meal. As an organization, we are a learning organization and uh, in this country things have been you know, done the same way uh, year in year out. And we really wanted to do this differently with a lot of innovation and creativity just to ensure that you know, uh, we do things which really suits the situation on the ground. Pasida believes that a clear way of getting children and the future generation out of poverty and put them into the right path to decent future life is by investing in child survival and protection interventions through education as an effective anti-poverty strategy. 
The Tigo School is one of such school Pasida has established targeting pastoralist children in the greater and expansive Marsabit County. The school was first started in 2016, where we started with about uh, 22. 2017, we had 57. Right now, we have uh, 153. But still, uh, this time, we're having more who are coming from, from other schools. The school also serves as a peace school for children from different warring communities in northern Kenya. I would like to thank our partners uh, who have really supported us in uh, putting up this facility. We would also like to thank our government for supporting us. You know, our education, uh, the, the county education director has been here several times trying to also support our staff and also looking at the quality of the, of the education. And we would also like to, you know, to, to tell our communities. We have about 15 communities in this, in this county. We would like them to, 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 to see this school as their school. It's not Gabra school, it's not Pasida school. So it belongs to all the communities.